We we made our comments about this Caitlin Clark fiasco and whatever the hell's going on with Team USA. And, and Jennifer Rosati now on the committee is giving her her commentary on why she didn't make it. And even though she's the number one alternate, like that makes it even more stupid, right? She's the number one alternate. So I hope she is now. Yeah, she's been announced. She was she's like the number one alternate. So. Okay, so she was going to be on the team regardless. Like, going to be so, out. And, and when we recorded, remember, I, 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 we talked about it. I didn't know Chelsea Gray for the Las Vegas Aces has not played one yeah, singular yeah. game this year. And that so-called practice that um, they had. Caitlin Clark missed, uh-huh. Chelsea Gray missed also. They're using all kinds of outrageous reasons that these, these women have been playing together for two years and they've been going to different events together. The U.S. men's team had, has 10 new guys on their team from play, that, who played in the last event. Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton, only guys coming back. The rest of them are gone. It's all, you know, LeBron, KD, Kawhi. And yeah. Kawhi won't play because he's hurt. You know, the, the, top, the, the, the top dogs who are all old as dog shit, which is a little bit concerning, to be honest, because they're old as hell. But yeah, they're, still, they're still hoopers. They're still, they're still hoopers, but, you know, they get they're, they're they're sensitive, too. They're not. As low as Diana Taurasi right now. There's yeah, but, but we, still we, we, in the league. Yeah, so it's, we, we, but it's what Jennifer Rosati says. It's it's we we we're not doing this for popularity contests. Well, you're not doing it for the best players either. You're not do, these aren't the best players. Chelsea Gray is not playing, so how can she be one of the best players? Brittany Griner at that point only played two games. How can she be one of the best players? Diana Taurasi had worse numbers across the board than Caitlin Clark as of last week. I think she now passed her in points by like a, a decimal point, but and shoots worse than her this year. The all the, you know, and then everyone's resorting to oh, Caitlin Clark turns the ball over. Sure, great. If that's your if that's what you're standing on or using some ESPN analytic <laughs> that, that I don't care about that most people don't care about because it's completely irrelevant uh, because the rookie of the month was Caitlin Clark. It wasn't anyone else. And it will be her again, more than likely, every single month. And uh, she'll probably win the Rookie of the Year. Huh? And you got a chance this month. No, she doesn't. Not, not if no, you, you got two more weeks of it. You got 18 she, more days. She's playing solid. You got 18 more days. Yeah, when she shot 26% from the field, she was great also. Well, uh, she, she played she, a great – she played a very good game yesterday yes, that they lost. 80%? They lost, yeah. They lost, though. Remember how you got – I give her her credit, her flowers. She made all her – she made her layups. So her rebound, offensive rebound numbers were not fluffy. Mm-hmm. She made her layups. She went 20 and 10, 8 for 10 from the field. Congratulations. They lost. Shout out to Andrew, baby. But they lost. Bad. When Caitlin had 30 and they lost, they said she, they lost. So either way, she had a great game. She had a great game. They won when Caitlin had 30. She had a great, no, she had one where they lost. She had a great game. Oh, early, early. They had, she had a great game by the standard in which she's being held to. 20 and 10 is a good game. Is it a great game? Is it an Asia Wilson 30 and 15? No. That's different. That's an amazing game. That's an astonishing game. Go look at Asia Wilson. That's literally every game for her. Yeah, that's, ast- that's astonishing. So, so every game she plays is astonishing. Damn near, yes. Well, okay. Well, if, you, if, if that's what astonishing, then she's an astonishing player, and that's why she's the best player in the league. Okay. But we went, we, we're going back and forth with some of these people and the commentary. Mm-hmm. And I'm comparing Kelsey Plum, and I'm looking at Kelsey Plum's numbers. And, again, Caitlin Clark has better numbers across the board than Kelsey Plum in every category except for points. She has two, point le- two points less per game, but she takes four and a half shots less per game. And play five at minutes. At the time. At and, the time. And huh? play five minutes less. Yeah. But she also plays with the best players in the world. And she I plays with the best player in the world. So yeah. she's not getting covered. And play five minutes less. Yeah. Uh-huh. Caitlin. And Caitlin's play, Caitlin plays less. Exactly. Caitlin that. plays less. Yep. So, but, and, she, and so Plum plays with the best, players in, in, uh, best player in the world. She's wide open when she shoots, and she's still shooting a 35% clip this year. And then it comes back, oh, well, Caitlin commits turnovers. Like, I, I, if that's your only argument is that she's committed turnovers this year, you're not watching basketball. You're not watching anything that I've seen. And, I mean, every, every guy now is telling us how they've watched all these games. No, you haven't. You just don't like this girl because she's a white girl. Let's just at this point, just say it. You don't like her because she's white. It's call it a day. Like, she's it, just call it a day. Like today they lost. Today Indiana won. 
Caitlin Clark played like shit. I have no problem saying it. She played like shit. She played like shit. Aaliyah Boston had the best game of her season. The reason Indiana is not as good as they were last year as of right now is because Aaliyah Boston's numbers have plummeted this season. She was the rookie of the year last year, and this year her numbers have gone from almost 15 a game to 10 a game, 10.5, from 10 rebounds to 7 rebounds. Her shooting percentage has gone from 58% to 42%. That's humongous. You would expect some level of improvement in the second season. Instead, you had a literally she's fallen off of a cliff until tonight. And they won. Yeah. And they won. They won because she was, and you know what? She took 21 shots. Clark ain't taking 21 shots in a game all season. I yeah. don't think. Yeah. Yeah. I, um... Oh, and Adam Silver just said today, the commissioner of the NBA, he wishes that Clark had been put on the team USA Olympic team. Why did he say that, Rudy? Because they're tired of funding this goddamn yes, league. They're tired of funding the and, league. And I watched a and I watched another podcast where there's a guy who does a lot of data stuff, and he and I, and I'll tag him on this. I forget his name, but I watched this guy's podcast, and he said that the projection this year for the WNBA is to lose fifty million dollars. God damn! No way. How is that? I don't know how that's even possible. They start. They they, they spend because they're for spending years. money. Before They're they spending it. a lot of money that they don't have. What kind of USA? I got a problem with spending money before. Because they came up with all these numbers for attendance and how everything's increased. And yet 33% of the, te- of the attendance in the actual WNBA this season is Indiana. Yeah. So they average 17,000. The rest of the league averages seven. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. tell me that she's not the person that sets the tone and moves the needle. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so when it comes to this whole topic, man, WNBA, I don't want to hear nothing anymore about 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 equal pay and, and getting paid because y'all had an opportunity, y'all had a golden opportunity to make some money and y'all pissed on it. Y'all totally didn't care about the opportunity anymore. Y'all have the, the, the chance to grow the game globally. So when you go to game globally, because everybody's watching and more people are tuned, you're going to make more money. And the bottom line is they've been crying about not getting paid the last few years. Now you got a chance to get paid. But because Kate was the reason you're going to get paid, now it's a problem. Take advantage of it, young ladies. Y'all have a chance. Y'all have a gold mine. And the people are like, oh, she won't. She's, she's not top 15 player. She's not. She averages she she averages top twenty in the league. She's top five in assists, and she still gets and she still gets five rebounds. I can't see that, Rudy. You muted. it. The WNBA is expected to lose fifty million dollars this year, despite recent popularity. The league is reportedly hard pressed to exist without the NBA. Yeah, they're exactly spending more so. money before they get it. So you have a chance to grow the game globally. Globally. That means everybody's watching. More people are going to be in tune. Now, just like the NBA, when they grow the game globally and now the European players became good and they had to come to this, come to our league and, and it became more amazing to watch and, and the game got more entertaining. We got people who could shoot the ball from 30 feet and 25 feet and we were all in tune and we were able to see what we could provide. Y'all got a chance right now, and y'all say no. How that make any sense? <clears throat> y'all talking about she's not good enough to be on the roster. She's top twenty in scoring. She's top five in assists. <laughs> she's five, averaged five rebounds a game as a point guard. And y'all telling me she's not physical enough to 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 play in the on the next level. So she's not good enough to be number twelve on the roster, and people are not going to watch come to watch her because she's the twelfth person on the roster, and she wouldn't play. Why wouldn't she play? They, they won eight gold medals. They win most of the games by 50 points, 60 points. So she can't get 10 minutes a game when, when the game's a blowout. You can't develop her when the game's a blowout. Yeah, like every game is going to be close. They had one close game a couple of years ago, and now we're like we're holding that against her. Well, that one close game, what if, what if we had her on the roster as the 12th person? Then you won't have to play her. You still are playing 11 other players before her. Okay, if that game she doesn't play, she doesn't play. But the other five, six games of, of competing and making the tournament or, you know, getting into the tournament, she could play those games when they're up 30 or shit. She could play when the game is damn close. The girl knows how to play basketball. She could sit in the corner. And like I said before, 
is either you're going to go over there and help or you're not going to help. You're going to leave a person like her to shoot the ball open. Her shooting percentage is down, like Rudy said, because she's hunting for all of her shots. She has to go get it off the dribble. There's not one time where Caitlin Clark is wide-ass open sitting there and gets a chance to, to, to fill the fucking laces on the ball and, and, and get real comfortable and shoot the ball. No, she has to be fading to the left every time. She had, When the last time you seen her shoot a set three? I seen her shoot one, and it was from 35 feet out. Because <laughs> they set a screen, and she yeah. was 35 feet out, and she knocked it down. But when did she set, had a, a chance to shoot an open shot when, it, when she's playing with all these other great players where they won't be able to give her that attention? She's going to knock down shots, and I think she'll shoot it better than anybody in the league if she had a chance to shoot it without being freaking open. Now, what are we talking about here? The, 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 the physicality of it. So they've been able to get physical with the rest of the team in USA, and they still lose by 40. So you're telling me that Team Canada and, and all these other teams are are, are, are going to be able to, to, to hold her down and be physical with her? Well, I think Canada's okay. Um, there's some other teams that damn God awful. <laughs> what are y'all? So what are y'all really talking about? At the end of the day, y'all don't like the girl. Y'all don't like what everything that she's bringing. Y'all don't like the, the entertainment, the, the fans that she's bringing, and y'all don't like that the fans are hyped and want to see her. Because y'all talking about well, all these players before her did this and did that, and they pay their dues. They weren't interested, damn it. That's what it was. Oh, y'all just came here. Yeah, you're damn right we just got here. You know why we just got here? Because we found somebody who we found interested to watch. The rest of y'all were not interested to watch. So y'all paved the way, but there's still brick walls right in front of y'all. She came and knocked those brick walls down. Y'all really didn't pave the way because y'all paved the way in y'all own rights. But in the bigger picture, y'all did not pave the way because we did not come to watch it. Nobody did. And then there's going to be a couple of people, well, I've been here since yada, yada, yada. Well, you're speaking for yourself. Kudos to you. I gave you a fucking round of applause. But the rest of us in the general, we weren't there. And that's what y'all need to get the masses, not just the five people that said, yeah, I've been here since 1998 and I've been watching these games since Maya Moore and Lisa Leslie and mm-hmm. Candace Parker and, and Cheryl Swoops. No. Okay. I'm, I'm, Brianna Stewart, all these people, none of them people move the needle like this girl has moved the needle at the end of the day. This is what we want to watch. Give it to us, please. Damn it. I don't care. <laughs> Somebody else could get off the team. Or is there only a rule that there only could be 12 players? Add a 13. I don't know. All right, 12 players. Well, somebody has to go, damn it. The 12th person has to go. And and there's people that's hurt. There's people that can that can be out and we'll be okay with it. Nobody would have batted a fucking eye except for the people that's really mad about her not being there. But guess oh, what? And, but guess and then what? the people. Are... Y'all would have uh-huh. gone to watch the fucking game, though. I guarantee y'all watch the game. They will. You there. Of course they will. And then the people that will respond saying, oh, well, the one that really should feel snubbed is Arike Ogumbawale. She should. She should feel snubbed. Because she's better than Kelsey Plum, too. Yeah. She's better than Chelsea Gray, too. Chelsea Gray has been in the league for nine years. She had her best season last year, and her numbers are basically in line with Caitlin Clark's, except for the fact that she's the third or the fourth best player on her team and doesn't have to deal with the freaking nonstop double teams and triple teams and onslaught that she deals with on traps. 80 feet from the rim. So, yeah. We, we put, they put four starters off of the Vegas Aces. So what does that it, It's a joke. They, 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 want to, they want to have a whole bunch of teammates. How many Indian, Indiana people players on there? None. None. Can any of them make that roster? Or like the, any other player on her team can be considered? Any well, other and none of them are good enough. Exactly. Not I mean, exactly. None of them are good enough. You know, you have – Phoenix has three. And and one of them is Taras, the other one's Griner, who probably should be not even considerable for the team, but she was put on the team, despite having played one game at the time that they put her on the team this season. And then you have two with the Liberty, which is Stewart and Ionescu. Look, I think I think Clark is better than every single one of them. All those guards. I think she's better than all those guards. I, I don't find any of those guards mind blowing. They don't. They're not mind blowing to me. Kelsey Plum took four years to average double digits in the WNBA. But yet she's not physical enough. She gets it up. That's the thing. She's like she's. It's like the Kelsey Plum is X. Kelsey Plum's five eight. She's five eight. But now, uh, but, but now she. But she's phys, But Caitlin's six foot and one hundred fifty five pounds. And get five rebounds, and, six rebounds, and, and grabs more rebounds. Has gets more assists. Block shots. 
block shots. She's averaging over a block, like a block shot a game. She had two blocks tonight. Man, these like, people are full of shit. And they say she played. Look, her defense. It's it's it, it needs work. It needs work. But she's still. But she's blocking shots because she's a six foot guard. You know, and I'm gonna bring it bring it back to Monica McNutt last week. Monica McNutt was brought on to John Stewart, and she made a comment. And I'm gonna play the clip so you can watch it. Now I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna play it in our video. You don't see it right now, Nick, but I'm gonna play it, and then they can watch it. Yeah. I'm replying to this thing right now. Monica, there was a question that John Stewart asked. Are people who were there, like who've been in the groundwork and building the WNBA, are they upset? Like, are, do you know any one of them who are feeling upset or whatever in terms of how all the attention has gone to Caitlin Clark? And you know what happened? Monica McNutt raised her hand in the interview. She admits that she is upset of the attention that Caitlin Clark is receiving. This is a woman who's supposed to be, who covers the league. Should be happy because the league. She should be ecstatic. (laughs) Instead, she's upset. She's bothered. And and, and it was, and you know, when when I saw the initial interview, I didn't notice it. I don't know why I missed it. But when I saw this other guy's podcast, he mentioned it. And he showed it. I'm like, oh my God, she did actually say that. She did actually say that. It's the same podcast who mentioned the 50 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to plug in because a really good podcast. Uh, I, it just drives me absolutely bananas. You know, that you're going to sit here and you're going to be a person covering this league, being on platforms like First Take, and argue with men who care about making money and whose concern is making money. Like Stephen A. Smith said in his show, you think I'm upset that Shannon Sharp's getting paid? He's creating an opportunity for me to get paid. He's, he's helped build our show up to another level since he's been here. And I'm going to make more money because of that. Pat McAfee gets more money now. I'm going to make more money because of that. And yet these ladies are mad that this woman is getting the attention because they're jealous. I don't so want to hear that they're not jealous. I'm not going to say every woman is jealous because yeah. that's what she also says. You know, the prevailing narrative is that everyone's jealous. No, I don't believe every woman is jealous because there are many women that know that they are not Caitlin Clark. The, the prevailing reality is probably the top 50 players in the league are jealous because they thought they were that person. Right now, the Aces got the Aces in three straight years drafted. See, the Aces didn't get good by accident. They had the number one pick of the draft. They got Kelsey Plum. The next year, they got the number one pick of the draft. They got Asia Wilson. The next year, they got the number one pick of the draft. They got Jackie Young. Those are three of their, three of their five starters. The next, I think the year after that, they got the number two pick. They've had, they had their, their entire team built on these picks. You know, and now there's also investigation on the Aces and this deal they got with, the, with Vegas, by the way, the, that city, community, whatever they got going on there. It's getting a little more serious, but they built the team with picks because they sucked when Kelsey Plum got drafted. They still sucked when Asia Wilson got drafted. So it's, it's just, you have people admitting, a media member admitting. Why would a media member be mad that this woman's getting the attention to this league? You wanted the attention, and now you're mad on how you got it. She changed your life. Like, she changed your existence because until now, Monica McNutt, God bless you. They might know who you are in New York because you do the Knicks. Outside of New York City, nobody gave a shit. And when you showed up on first take, you were like, who the fuck is this? And you made your life change by calling out Stephen A. Smith. And you, everyone said, yeah, Monica, woohoo, woohoo. The shitty league has attention. Yes, yes. No, it doesn't. It has bad. Like, you just admitted that your cash cow. You don't like. That would be like saying the players that saw Michael Jordan create all these sneaker deals. He created a sneaker deal. I don't like MJ because he makes more money. No, he, what his mother did and he did was change the game for people in the future. Or, and even in the present at the time. And you're mad? 
Asia Wilson may have had a sneaker deal coming, but I think it got, but it kind of got kick started a little bit more quickly. You know, so I don't, don't, don't want to hear them complain anymore about the money. Don't I don't want to hear about the pay is different and, and this and that. When you have the opportunity, everybody's talking about the W. Like it's on every platform now. First, they forced it down. I thought they, they pushed it on everything on ESPN, mm-hmm. every page, every post that they have on Instagram <laughs> now is WNBA. I've never seen that before in my life. But yeah. now we, and they should do it because. They pushed it down our throat, but now we're receiving it. We're just taking it. We're just sitting down and taking it. And it's becoming interesting now because of Caitlin Clark. But now it's becoming interesting because of all the pettiness that, that came about it. But like I say, the world loves drama. So y'all got us in tune. Don't run us away. <laughs> Don't run yeah. us away. Keep That's us awesome. keep us here. Keep our attention. Keep us in tune. Keep us watching. Keep us Keep putting Caitlin Clark on TV against other people, and other people. When y'all go against her, get your shot. You don't have to knock her down to get your shot. Fall out. Show us that you can make a layup uncontested, please. And then, <laughs> did you see? Did, okay, I'm sorry. Did you see the fast? You probably, you may have probably didn't see it. Did you see the fast break layup? Underhand by, by Angel? Angel by Angel Reese. It's where, put, they put, where they, the guy says, "Oh my!" <laughs> at mid court, like as if she was gonna dunk the ball or something. Like I, I don't know he why. Went, I clicked oh my! It. I don't know why I clicked it. He they went, "Oh me. my!" And me. then she does a jump stop on a layup, uncontested. Rudy, they got me. I, I was like, I was like, no, this would have been posted on Instagram because somebody posted it on on Twitter somewhere, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Angel oh my Reese. gosh! Like Angel she, Reese. Ca- she hadn't even caught the ball yet. And I said I would have saw it on Instagram. Something it would have been talked about. <laughs> I a, a jump stop, fast Ooh, break, my, wide open layup. My dumb ass say, "Well, she is six three. Maybe she got up this time." And then she did an underhand like. Oh, no, but it was a jump stop. Yeah, and then she. Did. When have you last seen a jump stop layup on a fast break? Well, it's not a dare. She's gonna do the underhand scoop. But why don't you just like? <laughs> you don't, on the one leg. You don't do overhand layups really, so. No, no. One leg, you jump with one leg up, and you're yeah, she, yeah, basic cool. layup drill. All right. Angel Reese is a little awkward offensively. We're, we're just going to accept it. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> He's a mother freaking beast on the board. You know some of them are hers? Rebounds? And she hustles like a mother. <sighs> she hustles. She yeah. hustles hard. Yeah. And, mean, I did say she, and I did say she should be on the team, Olymp- the Olympic team, too. So. She could be there, um, too. Yeah, you know, she should be on the team, too, because she does bring some eyes, and except in Maryland, where she's from. <laughs> they didn't come to the game. Well, they didn't sell out 17K. No, 20,333. 20,000, my bad. Yeah, she had 10. She's from there. What happened? Damn. What happened? I'm, 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 I'm taking shots now. I'm taking dicks. No, not, not needed. No, no, not needed. Angel Reese, she, she is bringing some eyes. She's just not bringing the Caitlin eyes. And we have to accept that. <laughs> Nobody, they won't accept that. They're like, oh, because she did. So we're not going back. Have you seen all the comments in response to us? Like, and, 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 Everyone, oh, oh, she has turnovers. I said, do you, I, actually, do you actually know the numbers, what's going on here? Like, have you watched the actual game more than one? Like, it's just so weird. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.